just a very short and sweet talk about um, how Buddha, after he gained enlightenment, he went to the deer park, Lu Ye Yuan. Uh, in, 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 in Sanskrit, is Mergar Darva, which is very hard to pronounce, but it means deer park, you know, wild deer park. And that area has five bhikkhus that follows him since he was a prince. I mean, he was practicing ascetism, which is not eating extreme ascetism. And these five precepts were, I mean, students were um, thinking that this guy came back and, you know, maybe he er realized the error of his way, but don't, let's put out some posture, posture, so that, you know, let him know that he shouldn't do that. Because they thought he betrayed the path, basically letting go of cultivation and going back to the life of pleasures. But they are not, he's not. He actually in, attained Buddhahood. And he went to tell them, did I ever tell you, I mean, the, uh, when they started thinking that I can just treat them co-treatment co to the Buddha, they can't help themselves. They saw Buddha is entirely different than what he was before. Very confident, very easy at ease someone who found what he wants mm -hmm. someone who someone who made it you, you just can't see it from their face they just peace they don't have worries agitation uh, about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow um so he uh sorry i'm just going to stop sharing for now um but he's very at, at peace with himself everyone just can't help but asking why are you so peaceful why are you so happy? Right? Because we all have something to worry about. Because we all have to chase after one thing or another. And then we need to worry about thinking about planning, about plotting. about. Buddha has none of that. If he has that, he's not Buddha. Right? He's a fake. He's, a, he's an ordinary people. Um, but he's not. So we are like, we need to know. So these five people cannot help but making the seat nice for him, bring him water, giving him a blanket, stuff like that, so he can sit nice and comfy. And then Buddha say, I have found a way, I have attained enlightenment. He say, as a matter of fact, not not flaunty, not boastful, just a matter of fact. Just like I drink water. I found enlightenment, I found a way. And that way will help you to uh, transcend your life and death situation, you know, the reborn situation. And he did. And everyone was like, a bit doubtful because you know we didn't see you for a few months and suddenly you come back and say you're enlightened and um, everyone have that look in their face Buddha say did I ever ever claim I have gained enlightenment back then did I ever mention that I, I have gained enlightenment I will help you this is the first time I say it right everyone's like yes this is the first time you say it that's right so that's why I, the reason I say it now is because I have made it. Back then I didn't made it. I didn't say anything. You keep quiet. So, <clears throat> so everyone sat down and actually dispelled their thought, the doubts about you know, qualification of Buddha as a Buddha. And now he is fully enlightened. So everyone listens. So you start with the four noble path, suffering, which is, you know. You don't get what you want, what you like, what you who, who you like, who you love, or what you like, what you love, leaves you very quickly, you know, pass away, or the thing you like, the food you like, finished. Well, that's very trivial, but you know, relatable. Um, what you don't like, who you, whom you do not like, or people you don't like, the food you don't like, the thing you don't like, happens to you. In terms of work and things are not smooth as it is. It's more trouble, more back, back, back lock. <laughs> I'm just talking about experience now. And then you get like really, really, you know, tired and torn about all these things, you know, troubles, troubles, other troubles. So those are sufferings in a way. And also, you know, I believe Yuan Zheng Hui, Chiu Buddha, what you wish for, you can get it. And you know, pretty much sum up the whole human existence in a sense. And um, the fear of death, you know, death, illness, sickness, death, illness, um, aging, that's another form, life too short. You no know, matter what you learn, when you die, you forget about it. Or you 
memory suspends it. You have to start again next time. Um, so all this condition, you know, cravings, desires, it's all because of cravings and desires. That's why he cannot attain what Buddha is doing, which is calm, being present, not agitated. You just feel it. I can't. I can't describe to you. Like if someone actually made it, actually, you know, there, not even billionaire can do it, because they will still have another projects, another bunch of worries about their companies and stuff like that. It's just they have it easier than us because they have more resources, but they still need to worry about this and that, this and that. But Buddha has nothing to worry about. He has no need to worry about anything. He already know what. Why? Why would most people worry about things? Because nothing, you know, it's all about food, right? It's all about survival, shelter, livelihood, those basic stuff they worry about. And then they also worry about other stuff on top of that, you know, the wants, the needs, have have nots, the um, relationships, right? The you know, especially when you marry and get into this, you know, your partner and all that, you need to think about this, think about that, and then you get into the family, you need to think about your children, you need to, you need to think about daughter, and then think about grandparents, your parents, oh my goodness, non-stop. And you need to think about this, you know, planning, meal plan, and then, see, by, by the virtue of me talking about it, I already think about it. So, all this thing comes together. You know, this worries, worries after worries, because of um, expectation. Oh, I'll have to do this, I have to do that. So all these are sufferings, and that's why we are always here, stuck, repeating this, and in pursuit of this. Um, why, when we in front of suffering, we trying to pursue the cessation of suffering, and uh, we trying to how to say stop it. Our problem is the way we do it, causing more sufferings because we are not fully using our faculties to engage we just follow the surface level you know whatever you know your leg pain you treat your leg your heart uh, head. it's treated on the on the symptoms not the cause in a sense you know like you're hungry you eat and after that you're hungry again you eat and you're hungry again you eat and then you eat too much then you feel stomach ache you don't have enough in between the meals you want to bite something sweet because your tongue demands it. Now, if we don't have enough awareness, which I did, not have enough awareness, you indulge in the sensory of saltiness and sweetness. Why am I going so deep in this? Because this is craving, literally craving, pursuing, 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 you know, in a minuscule level. And then, once you have too much, you feel stomach ache, or your stomach is working against you. So if you enlarge it in your day-to-day -day life, same thing, human as well, relationship as well. Oh, we crave for the attention. Now they give you too much attention, you feel annoying. And then they don't give you, they didn't say anything, you feel like they're angry. And then all this thinking and guessing and perception, um, overthinking as well. So those things are clouding our thoughts, our judgments, and unable for making us deadlock into these um, illusions. And we, the delusion that we keep reinforcing ourselves as well. You know, the perception we thought other people is, is not actually what it is. People might actually literally thinking about, what's my next meal? Maybe they look at that brooding face and then you felt like they were like thinking about your words earlier that you might have said something rude or something. So be careful of that. Uh, and Buddha said that this is cause of suffering, right? Suffering itself, phenomenon. Second one is... The, the, the cause of suffering, the, the accumulation of suffering, it's very deep and um, we can talk about this a bit later. And then we can um, cessation of suffering. How do we actually stop this? You know, how do we actually engage in this, you know, right now? This is something you facing right now. This is not something you talk about. It's something you live in. And now we need to uh, use Master Ching Kung's shortcut, in a sense, to make it easier for us to understand and use. Kampo function, see through let go, right? Your website, Andy. See through let go. That's the slogan we have. 
And why? Because when you see through, which is what we're doing right now, we are all putting on the table, laying it bare, putting under the scrutiny of our consciousness. Even our consciousness is under scrutiny, scrutinizing ourselves. Consciousness scrutinizing the consciousness. Yeah, this is this is fun to talk about. And then making understand that this is not none none of them is independently aware. Independently exists. Everything has relationship to another thing. Right? Your 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 body, your eyes, your nose and tongue, everything is engaged in one another in concert, like a concert orchestra, to make whatever reality you think it is. So does your mind. You know, the mind is even bigger stuff. That's the one, the thing that creates the world, in a sense. Called light power, if you want to use it. Alright? But they're all delusory. Why? Because they're all based on impermanence. Right? The product of their creation is impermanent. Right? Hence, you have Buddha talk about impermanence. Impermanence of things that always change. Why is the number one impermanence? You will die. Because the concept of birth, becoming, always accompanies with death, unbecoming, extinction, creation. Always have this duality coming up. So without going too, too much into that, we, we're just trying to understand that this is how, you know, this rhythm keeps coming and forth, coming and forth, you know, and it's always changing. No matter what pattern they change, they, they have to change. And sometimes they change very, very, very drastically. Sometimes they change very small. And the pattern of change is always there. So that's impermanence. It keeps keeps moving forward. You know, a cell multiplies every day. Which body is you? Yesterday's Dylan is already different from today's Dylan because I already swapped my cells involuntarily every day. It's science. Right? Your body cells keep repairing itself until you, it can't anymore. We call it aging. And then your body cells stop repairing itself, it becomes death. So called death. Is it really death? Right? So, enhance the Zen saying of sin, you put on sin, you put on sin. You never, you're born, but you're actually never really born. You die, you never actually really die. It's just you you want to play this game and you just keep playing it until you really 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 sick of it maybe you away want to be awakened but you get too attached to this so our job is to see through this is see through this is just see through guys let go let go oh, let go yeah let go if i put it in words it's not really not let go isn't it you just gotta yeah and it takes time, man. It takes time. Let go means, you know, literally cessation of suffering comes out from cessation of craving. So craving is uh, the cause of suffering, right? So what what makes us suffer? You know, not enough food, too cold, too hot. Uh, those single ones to be married, those married ones to be out of the marriage. <laughs> those who have kids want to be left alone. Those who doesn't have kid wants to have kid. Though I'm citing the infinite life to trust. That one hits straight to my heart. So basically saying that you have house, you worry about the tax, you worry about the land tax. You don't have a house, you worry about the house. And then you have the you have you have partners. Now you really want to be left alone for a while because it's too much. Sometimes you know those little things you argue. You don't have partner, you want to have a partner because you feel lonely. You have children, you want to be left alone for a while because it's just so tiring every single day. These people, this young little young creatures young creatures on their TikToks every day and then you don't have a children you want a children because you feel like something's missing in your marriage and then same goes for goods clothing everything those are outside right um, but 
Beyond that, you have COVID, you have bushfire or wildfire, you have Ukraine, you have war, you have economic crisis, you have inflation, you have 7% increase in your house or home, home rate. Ouch. That increases your rent. Getting very close to home now. These are sufferings. All right. These are very real. Uh, you have food that are not cleaned. You have water supply that are no longer um, you know, sustainable. Uh, you have the earth that is getting warm. You have the you have the lands that are getting more dry, uh, more infertile. You have the society that are getting more cold and distant. All right, all these are changing, for better or for worse. We are the, our the wit we are witnessing it ourselves. Of course, there are better stuff. Of course, remember Buddha don't say that to scare. This he's just listing as is. Things deteriorate. Things will get better, and then it will deteriorate. That's how it is. The problem for now is um, these are phenomena, and what is the cause of all this, right? And one major thing is our cravings, our desires, and then why do we want to crave this? You know, desire this because we do not understand how things works. We always want to release. Ease our five senses. We always want to ease our mind, ease our five senses, and and then we start to engage in thousands of movements, actions to pursue the end goal. But when we pursue the end goal, do we actually get what we want? Do we actually feel happy? And that happiness, just like the chase, just as quick as it comes, as quick as it goes. Like the quiet, the quiet, and 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 that craving gets more and more. The more craving there is, the more fleeting the happiness is. And so this becomes more and more endless cycle of chasing, and we never never rest. We worry, 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 anticipate, agitate. That's the reason why Buddha calls his son Rahula. He's trying to show us, you know, um, in terms of um objective way, right? Putting aside all the emotional perspective, just as is, it's a baggage. Family, in a sense, is a baggage. Of course, it's also a root of our society, important need to preserve it. But in, in terms of cultivation, in terms of understanding, of course, as a lay Buddhist, we need to do our job. Uh, we need to continue what we have and I'm not telling you to be a monk. That's your own choice. But while we're saying that, there's a reason why people have this professional cultivation, professional, like cultivating in concentration because of letting go of these desires. And this has to be done whether you're lay or monk. It's just monk has even more responsibility to actually do it in public. For us, we need to do it in private. As in, the monk, of course, need to do in private. In, it means by themselves, they have to let go of all their desires. But for us, it's okay for us outside to have all these desires. But we also need to loosen the grip on these desires, these cravings. Otherwise, we still get stuck in life and death. doesn't matter who you are, right? You still get things stuck into this cycle. And this cycle is reinforcing itself by the virtue of our actions. Keep repeating the same thing, chasing the same thing, worry about this, worry about that, end up none of them is useful. None of them you can bring home. Because all you can bring home, not even this body, let alone everything outside this body. That's a very straightforward, straight to the point way of looking at the world. Right? Even that graveyard is meant for your body, not for you. Who are you? Who are you? Your mother's son? Your mother's daughters, your father's son, your father's daughters. But are you still your father's sons, your father's daughters after you pass away? Who are you before your father's son, your mother's son? Who are you before you were born? Who are you after you were born, after you pass away? So that you is only like for that per period of time. So playing a game, you go into the avatar and then you, you identify yourself as that person and then you reinforce that kind of ideas 
And then after that, when you pass away, nothing you can hold on. You log off. Who are you? Who's behind this? All right. This is why it gives rise to a lot of these religions and thinking and all the constructs. But if you actually cultivate, actually see the reality as is, you know, we actually are, you know, hopping from one existence to another because we're so used to it, just like the ants. I remember seven Buddha has born and went into Nirvana and they are still ants because they thought they are ants. It's all they are. All they see is that sm they're small. For us as well, right? we're stuck into this mode of thinking and we just keep naturally go straight to that. So that's why we need to loosen that grip. Understand that this is not everything. Hence, when that perspective kicks in gear, whatever you pursue right now is bare minimum. Just enough to get your body well maintained. You know, don't no longer needing to crave this, crave that. You know, food enough to eat, healthy enough, good enough. I'm grateful. That's it. Right? In the office, chasing the career, climbing the ladder. Of course, if you want. It's like playing games. We truly like games. I got it, I got it. I don't got it, I don't got it. I got it, I can do more things. I don't got it, I have less worries. Not saying that you should be passive, you should be, you know, don't do anything, sit there and wait to die. Not like that. That's not the, that's not Buddhism. Remember, there's a Bodhisattva path which is even bigger than any single person in this world can achieve. Now that is a lifetime, lifetimes of pursuit. That one has a, Huge ambition, huge vow that is founded, grounded on love, kindness, and also wisdom. And love, kindness can be practiced in our human realm with our parents and our friends, our siblings. Those things needs needs to have. These are equipments for us to get out. All right. Also, get in, get out, and get in. Um, that is a there is another level. For for now, we need to understand that Buddhism core as well is about getting ourselves out of this mud so that we can pull other people out of the mud. So get ourselves out of this mud so that we can clear ourselves of the mud, see the mud as a mud, not as a swimming pool of pleasure. And then while we're sinking all the way to your nostrils and realize it's a mud, it's, kill me, it's killing me, it's too late. It's just like boiling frogs. How they do it? They put the frogs in a very comfortable, optimal temperature, right? They're not going to go 100... 20 degree Fahrenheit straight away, they go 86, 76, slowly to 86, and then 96. Oh my God, the frog's getting more and more agitated now. It's too late. By the time it reaches the boiling temperature, the frog is paralyzed. It's cooked. Just like our life as well. It's comfort. Comfort is also the enemy of your progress. All right? Too comfortable. We sink into ignorance. Sink into uh, blissfulness. So, too hard, too much, too much pressure, too much worries, too much pursuit. Your your mind is ten direction, which is what happening. Too ten direction, you can't see anything clearly because you keep chasing after one after another. You can't even see. You 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 can't settle down. So, our job is to learn the pace ourselves. That's why Buddha always talk about middle path. He learned it himself. He went and go 100% uh, not eating for months. All he get is a very weakened body and nowhere near enlightenment, nowhere near solving the problem of life and death, nowhere near a way out of this problem. A lot of people nowadays, they silly thinking euthanasia and all that is a way out. It's like, oh, my car is not working. Let me get this car wrecked. Like, let me just destroy the car. It's it's a car, man. It doesn't matter. You still need a car. Unless you realize you don't need a car. I don't know. I don't know. It's a very bad analogy. Basically, this is a tool, right? You, 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 you kill the tool. The problem is still there because the problem lies in you as a person, the driver, right? It's like saying that... Uh, you know, the driver is very bad at driving or the bright driver has trouble driving uh, 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 and 
maybe the car is not doing well, so let's just you know put in end put an end to the car prematurely instead of trying to fix it and trying to work on it until its natural lifespan has ended. Uh, it's a really bad analogy. Anyway, the point the point is um, four noble truths is important in um, every way. Every Buddhism is founded on this. Um, understand this, and we will be able to get there. See true, let go. Right? See true, let go. Um, Buddha's job is to teach you see true. Let go is your own business. Buddha cannot tell you to let go. Right? No one can tell you to let go other than yourself. Right? Whatever tactics they use is just a assistance. It's not absolute. They can't make you let go. If they can make you let go, we don't need to sit here and talk about these hours. We can just be enlightened and go to Pure Land. Why are we here? Buddha can just say, "Okay, go to Pure Land. Okay, boss," and then you just go. No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have to let go yourself. You gotta have to let it sink in. Actually, actually have a lighter cravings on the senses on the pleasures that means you 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 you're no longer as picky as you were in your food you're no longer as lust lusty as you were over you know opposite uh, over you know uh, where were you attracted to you're no longer as you know craving as you were on food and stuff like that you are you're able to enjoy good food you appreciate it but you're not attached to it bad food you don't complain or anything you just eat it as a new nutrition source you see things as it is you're flexible you're more bouncy you're able to to adapt in more situations because you're able to see through you see through the reality as is you no longer get stuck into one mode of thinking right and that that is important we need that to move forward so buddha has taught that and so many of them five of them the Kondinya is the, the cruel king in the past life. When Buddha was being carved by him in his past life, Buddha said, the first person I'm going to help to attain enlightenment is you when I become Buddha. And then he made his promise. Kondinya is the first person in our earth to attain Arahant, the first level of enlightenment. As in the first, um, yeah, the highest level of enlightenment known back then, announced by Buddha. And then the rest following become enlightened. Five of them go out, spread the teaching. Right? Five of them spread the teachings. And of course, five of them make into 60. Uh, because five of them met students, uh, the other people. Um, wait, 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 wait. I jumped, I jumped the gun. I'm so sorry. Five of them continue their um, practice, cultivation, or attain Arahant which I mentioned last week is the fourth level, which is the highest level in early Buddhism of enlightenment, the uh, cessation of desire, which is what I'm talking about just now. All this thing is a process and finishing, able to eliminate, able to convert all this desire, I mean, eliminate this desire um, while maintaining sentience um, is out of hand. Uh, yeah, I don't want to mis mislead people on this. Basically, able to loosen the grip, right, of attachments of sensual desires. You know, ill will is a qualification to be an arahant, to be a arahant, which is enlightened um, first level, right, of enlightened in Mahayana perspective. It's very important to loosen this false sense of self, um, false sense of identity. You know, your body is you, no. Your mind is you, no. We talk about eight consciousness. Break it down. None of them is actually independent by themselves. They are all relying on each other like a machine, like a car, like a robot. Everything rely on each other to exist. So none of them is independent. None of them is standalone. So they are all conditional. That means there will be times when condition not met, you will disperse. So that is not you. If it's you, it's always permanent. It's there, unchanging. Problem is they are all conditional. They are all changing, subject to change. So that, setting aside, the whole process, getting to Arahant is another topic. We already mentioned it. 
So what I'm trying to get at is they are all attain arahant, and then there's a young person coming asking for help. I think that young person is Sujata, and he is asking Buddha for help because he has a very lavish, playboy kind of lifestyle. He's the son of a millionaire in the town where Buddha situated next to that deer park next to it there is a big town and that big town is a millionaire like Bill Gates basically he has a son his son is living in a as you can imagine this kind of young you know daddy's money young lifestyle uh, playboys a lot of women a lot of food good food good clothes beautiful women surrounding 24-7 non-stop and then he has sick of it that means he has good roots he went to Buddha which is outskirts of the city because he heard of this sage who has attained enlightenment can find a way to alleviate suffering now he got way too much pleasure now he got to the point where he thinking is there anything more than that I mean he has good root his calling is coming and he went to Buddha and asked for that the Buddha tell him the story which is what I'm talking about in the fall of the truth and then continue he accepted it he liked it and he followed Buddha. His father did not understand, of course, because his precious son is disappeared. And then he went to the Buddha, and the Buddha said that, let me tell you what I tell your son. And then, of course, his father was impressed and never heard something so clear-cut, straightforward, straight to the point before. Because back then, it was quite convoluted to get here and there. Everyone has their own version. None get to the point as the Buddha did. Buddha did so. And then he also wants to be a lay Buddhist. His son becomes the monk, I think. I think, And then he becomes a lay Buddhist. Right? And here is where I told my um, fellow youth group people, uh, friends, as a lay Buddhist, we have our role in the Sangha, in the Buddhist organization, Sangha. We are part of the Sangha. You know, lay women, lay men. And then... Um, we are producing stuff, uh, part of a member of a society that produces, right? And then we should use these resources. Buddha taught, you know, these young men, uh, one half to, one part to feed your children, your family, you can support your family and stuff. One part to save for investment, business, career, skill, upskill, anything. One part for charity helping people in need there are four parts the last part is savings for future needs so those things are very practical stuff they're not like telling you to this is for lay buddhists right and he taught that to another young person um which i haven't reached in the actual talk so i will do that next one so this case for us we have a important role of maintaining that platform like you know all the associations around the world you know we work together create a platform so that people can come together practice share thoughts socialize get to know each other get to know more about dharma most importantly get to know about how do we practice dharma by looking at each other how, how we do it there's a role model maybe the monk the teachers you know how they act and this is crucial for us um, because we have the means to do it you know to provide the platform and and so you know just because we are not monk doesn't mean that we have no responsibility in protecting the Dharma you know, we so because this this um this millionaire provide a Vihara I think a, a, a place for the Buddha and the um rest of the um, monks that follows him to have a settled area to teach and because of that the mil and this rich millionaire of course he has a lot of connection that's how he get rich of course and of course he has more people the more people heard of the Dharma and it spread and then there is this group of people that I think prays to the fire you know the um, that they're doing what they're doing but they heard the Buddha Dharma and they're thinking this makes more sense and I actually can attain enlightenment out of this you know 
and so all of them follows. And the students, each of them have their own acquaintance, all follows. So this becomes a chained event and everyone just link together and eventually you build up to 65 people. The Buddha say, all of you should not have one single direction that is similar to each other. You should go your own direction and spread the word because you all have attained enlightenment. Because all of them are diligent, this is our first batch, very p first batch of Buddhist monk. They are practicing Buddha's words by heart. They learn to see through let go on the spot in, in the Sangha through through you know practice of precepts, upholding the rules, upholding the precepts, what uh, you know, what a monk should be doing, you know. Meditation, you know, sleep. And even sleeping is like a military, there are four terms and and you know, you don't sleep more than this about amount of hours. Wake up, meditate, ponder upon Buddha's thoughts, use that as your guide. And then meditate, go deep, let go of your desire, loosen your desire, soften it, soften it, soften it, soften it, and then arahant. I'm gloss is simplifying it, but try do it yourself and you understand how many level of discipline you need to have. And this is why um, they all gain enlightenment because they are very, they listen, they just do it, they don't think too much. Like me, I think a lot, they don't, they are very light, their desire is very light. This is our first batch, very pure. Well, they already have good foundation before then. So that way, they spread throughout the entire India. So they were 65 of them all went their own directions. Maybe there are a few left behind, you know, serving Buddha, continue learning from him. They all went to their own direction, you know, begging alms, continue to practice because they all enlightened. So this is how it works, mate. This is how it works. One to ten, ten to hundreds by example, by making them successful, and then they will go out and continue the words. So this is where I stop um, telling us that it's important to be play our role as lay Buddhists. You know, we may not be like directly spreading the Dharma, but we are making it happen, making it happen by providing the resources, being the person to help to organize it. Even in our power, we can volunteer it. You know, those things helps to propagate Dharma, making us understand the Dharma in process, how it works in action, not just in words. That's it. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Ami to for ten times Ami to for chanting. Ami to for 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 Ami. Ah, me, to, for. Ah, uh, 